This is Tamale, the capital town of the northern region of Ghana, located within the Guinea Savanna Belt. It is Ghana's third largest city and an emerging investment hotspot in West Africa. Major economic activities in the metropolis and the whole northern part of Ghana revolve around farming and trading. Yet, this geographical zone is poorly endowed with natural water bodies. Rainfall in the region ranges from 1,000 millimeters a year compared to the rainiest areas in the south of Ghana, where precipitation is about 1,500 millimeters per year. In the midst of agricultural, irrigation and water challenges in the region comes the establishment of a centre under a World Bank initiative that is focused on tackling these major challenges faced by the people of northern Ghana. This centre is the West African Centre for Water, Irrigation and Sustainable Agriculture, WAKWISA. The centre came into fruition as a result of the challenging systems in the environment, that is a, a scarcity of water coupled with uh, the high level of uh, food insecurity that is uh, common in the uh, African region. And uh, if you consider the drier areas of Africa, you realize that water scarcity is a major problem. So there was therefore the need to have a training center where water resource will be a major focus, especially looking at the effects of climate change and then irrigation as a major uh, pillar in solving problems in terms of food insecurity in the Africa region. The centre was established in 2019 by the University for Development Studies as a semi-autonomous centre of excellence to undertake cutting-edge research and training in irrigation, drainage, water resource management, sustainable agriculture, climate change and food and nutrition security. The number of research projects that are going on first has to do with student research projects because all the final year students uh, of what we have special cohort one and two are currently doing their research. Some of them have almost completed because now I have six students who have finished their work but there are still other students who are still uh, analyzing data Apart from that, there are other research projects that are run by the center. We have the, for example, we have the net water project, which uh, is also going on in the center uh, related to water. But we have uh, one of the labs that is uh, responsible for water analysis. That's where they are collecting their samples they are putting. And we also have other projects that are doing, that has to do with assessment of irrigation potential of small dams. And there we are also taking soil samples to be brought to the soil lab for soil analysis to be done. That is what is going on for now. What we say, we run two main programs uh, at the moment, at the master's and the PhD level. At the, and these programs are the uh, Irrigation and Drainage Engineering, master's and PhD. We also run Environmental Management and Sustainability, also master's and PhD. Our programs are specialized programs, and so um, if you don't have these backgrounds, um, often you would have challenges um, coping with the, with, with the program. And so it is um, very much encouraged that you should have, it's a build up. So for instance, if you are coming to study irrigation and drainage engineering, and you do not have irrigation and drainage engineering background, or any of the um, uh, backgrounds that I listed earlier, you would have um, challenges coping with the thought courses and even um, when it comes to your research. And so at the end of the day, um, as a center of excellence, as we look out for um, training very high caliber professionals, you might have challenges, you know, um, coming out as the kind of um, uh, specialized person that we want you to be. So we don't encourage people who do not have backgrounds in our area of um, focus to apply. Wakwisa is funded by the Government of Ghana and the World Bank under the African Centers of Excellence Impact Initiative. It also collaborates with other funding agencies to explore new and emerging avenues to advance the frontiers of knowledge. Being a student of Wakwisa, my experience, um, it's been very, very 
uh, good, very great, I should say. And um, with the lecturers, I would say it's, they are very, very experienced lecturers and very devoted to whatever they do um, in class and even on the field because they take us out to the field to have hands-on practical experience on the field to know whatever they are teaching in the class and then uh, on the field we are able to apply them very well. Currently we have three cohorts of um, students who um, have been admitted at between 2019 and now and in total we have 48 uh, students both masters and PhD. In fact, as we speak now, we have equal uh, numbers. We have just finished the process to enroll our fourth cohort of students. And uh, when that comes up, our number is, is, is going to go very up. The mission of the center is to develop skills and knowledge of individuals. So as to provide practical and sustainable solutions to the challenges of irrigation and agriculture development in the West Africa sub-region. And then it envisions also to be a world-leading class academic and research center specialized in the West Africa region, focusing on the training and development of irrigation and sustainable agriculture with the necessary knowledge and technology of solving problems related to agriculture. The number of labs currently run under the center is two. We have the one that we see here, that is the water and soil lab. Then we have another one, and that is for the GCMS, that is gas chromatography and mass spectrometer laboratory. But the main objective of this lab is to study soil and water quality analysis. And so as the center is more focused on irrigation, as part of the studies, we should be able to monitor what water or the quality of water we are using for our irrigation purposes and then the soil as well. There are, I think, about three projects uh, that is ongoing. And through these projects, we engage these communities. We have projects funded by Danida. Uh, we have projects funded by Unido. And currently, there's one that is funded by GIZ. And these are projects that uh, link us to the community, help us to engage the community in solving pertinent issues. We have one that is more into climate change, issues on climate change. The institution has local, regional, and international educational and organizational partners. The local educational partners include the University of Cape Coast, and the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. The center's regional networks are with the International Institute for Water and Environmental Engineering, 2IE in Burkina Faso, Belsh University of Technology in Nigeria, Andu Momoni University in Niger, and the University of Rwanda. On the international front, the center partners with the following institutions, Wageningen University and Research in the Netherlands, Galilee International Management Institute in Israel, the United Nations University Institute of Advanced Studies in Japan, the Disaster Prevention Research Institute in Japan, and other universities in India. Some of the notable research accounts include um, um, recently one of our students developed a pharma support app, and that uh, app has been tested in the community where um, uh, farmers had to uh, utilize that app and give their feedback. It basically involves a, it's a, it's a, a farmer support app that involves uh, combining um, local indigenous knowledge with that of modern technology. So how farmers perceive, for example, weather conditions, all those things. So they're able to combine that with uh, modern technology, a farm support app, and that was implemented and the feedback was very good. So we are working directly with the communities. We make sure that at least the research that we carry out here are able to solve challenges of farmers in the field. We have um, um, in the Nabogo Valley area, Nabogo, yes, they tried the, the farmer support app in that place. And then in other communities nearby, which I don't really have that particular name, but 
it's a rice farming uh, village along the Bolgatanga Highway. So they try this farmer support up there for farmers to be able to utilize it and then to give their feedback on the results they have obtained so far. For being an international student, I was given a special package. First, at the level of the visa entering into the country. On my arrival at the airport, the school, the center, had already pre-informed the airport that they will be receiving students from outside. So help should be given to them to acquire their visas at the airport. And also from the airport coming to Nyangpala, they gave us directives on how to move. Since we are new in the terrain, we are, it's our first time. When we had settled down, we were registered into the medical insurance, whereby when you're sick, you can go and show the card at the hospital and you are being given drugs or you are being catered for. So, and also at the packaging level, what they give to the international students, that's the allowances, is a little bit higher compared to the national students. We want to examine the quality of this water and we are trying to trace if it has some number of pathogenic organism in the sample. And so we pick some known quantity concentration or drops of the water sample. We put it on the slide and then we transfer it to our microscope for analysis. Now the micro microscope is adjusted to make possible visualization of all potential pathogens that may be identified in the water sample. So from here, I try to navigate the slide to be able to run through and make sure that at least all the water sample that is spread out on the entire surface of the slide has been captured and if there are potential organisms might be recorded. And so you see that you may see a whole lot of images that may come out and mostly a lot of them are debris that comes from or that comes with a sample. So it really needs a great deal of time to be able to scan through and be able to identify the organism we are looking for. Whatever organism we identify and we suspect is a potential pathogen, we take a screenshot of it and then later we relate or we, we compare it to the standard kit that is able to define or determine whether what we've captured is um, similar to what the standard kit is telling us, then by that we are able to make our judgment or our conclusion on the analysis that we are carrying out. My assessment of the enrollment and selection process at Wagbisa, I will rate it as being very fair because they select you based on your CV, your experience and your level of education. We come from different backgrounds. Some people come from the social sciences and others come from the engineering background. So they all bring us based on your experience. For example, I come from an engineering background. They selected me because I have an experience in the agricultural sector. Wakwisa provides solutions to agricultural, irrigation and water challenges in the Savannah region of Africa. It has strong collaborative networks with universities, research centers, local communities, and policy makers. In the next 10 years, we should be self-sustaining. Uh, you ask for funding. We shouldn't look back to any major funding agency in the setting up the, the rudimentary areas of whatever we want to do. And we should be able to provide high level a capacity building for all those who require. We should also be able to provide good consultancy and advisory services that would be required by major players in the industry. And then we think that our graduates should have also been produced and then occupying very good positions and transforming the landscape of food insecurity into a food secure world that we should, our impact should be felt across the globe. Look no further than Wakwisa if you are poised on developing skills and knowledge on water, irrigation and agricultural sustainability. <laughs>